Hi, my name is David Ross, chef owner at 50 Local Restaurant in Kennebunk, Maine. We're here in the woods of Kennebunk and I'm going to show you how to forage mushrooms today. Okay, uh, we've run into a really nice patch of hedgehog mushrooms. Hedgehog mushrooms are really nice to cook with. They have great flavor, uh, almost a woody chanterelle flavor, uh, but a bigger size so you get a better yield out of the mushroom. Um, they're also one of the easier mushrooms to identify. The spines on the bottom are what identify the hedgehogs. So when I'm harvesting a mushroom, we practice sustainable harvesting. Um, and that is we cut, we use a nice uh, sharp knife uh, or a uh, pair of scissors to cut at the root. And what that allows it to do is keep what's called the mycelium. And it's the mycelium that feeds the mushrooms. So I want to leave that root right there on the ground. Then I have a nice hedgehog mushroom. Okay, so we've run into a nice cluster of black trumpet mushrooms. Uh, black trumpet mushrooms are definitely one of the most uh, sought after mushrooms uh, in the culinary field. Right around this time of year, you're gonna find a lot of black trumpets in Maine, um, you know, where there's uh, red oak trees or a lot of oak trees uh, is what you wanna look for. Swamps, moss, and um, <clears throat> elevated rocks is where I like to look for them. Uh, black trumpet mushrooms are a delicate mushroom and uh, when you're cooking with them uh, it's not a mushroom that you really want to throw on the grill or uh, put in the oven. Uh, you really uh, want to uh, saute them gently and uh, put them into dishes that are going to uh, preserve their flavor and accent their flavor. I like to do them uh, with pasta or they make a great mushroom for a sauce, uh, for steak or for chicken, um, something uh, with a, a meaty characteristic because they do have a great uh, flavor to them and uh, they're very unique and you'd want to use that flavor uh, to accent whatever. It pairs really well with uh, heavier meats um, and uh, red wines and, su and uh, such. So in order to harvest uh, black trumpet mushroom, uh, really what you want to do is of course practice sustainable uh, harvesting and cut them by the root leaving the mycelium in the ground again. So this one you can look inside and you can see you know if it's if there's bugs in here but normally what I do is just cut it in half and just look inside and just brush it out. And this one here is free of bugs so that's good. We've run across a couple chanterelle mushrooms. Normally chanterelles don't grow in this type of environment. Uh, they like white pines, uh, drier woods, but uh, you never know. It's always good to keep an eye out and uh, especially when you see uh, these orange mushrooms like this and they just jump out right at you. They're a much more versatile uh, mushroom and they really hold their flavor well. And um, when they're fresh and right out of the ground, is when they're tasting their best obviously um, and they're very easy to uh, distinguish when you're eating them. The thing that I look for in the chanterelle is the color of the stem, the thickness of the mushroom and uh, also the gills. That's what's going to uh, help me decipher whether this is a, a real true chanterelle from some of the false ones that you might encounter out in the woods. If you happen to accidentally pull the mushroom out from the ground um, it's okay. What I would do is cut the stem off, cut a hole into the ground, and just put the stem back into the ground uh, as you were planting a seed. Um, and that will still protect uh, the mushroom for the following season. Uh, we wouldn't be in Maine and we didn't have to mention uh, lobster somewhere. So uh, we've run into a nice patch of lobster mushrooms. Lobster mushrooms are mushrooms that have been uh, taken over by a fungus. Um, allowed them to uh, get a red color and uh, take on a different flavor characteristic. A milk cat mushroom you really don't want to eat. They're very, very spicy and uh, will burn your mouth. So these mushrooms are very mild, uh, a woody mushroom, uh, very nice to eat, slice very thin, saute them up, but um, they are very dirty. So um, you want to definitely clean them very well. So slice it to the root close to the ground and then clean it up as much as you can while you're out on the field. This one here is a little bit moldy, probably not 
is great. You can do is you can slice them. And then if you get a nice white meat in the middle, then you're then this should be very good to uh, to cook with. When it comes to storing these mushrooms, you want to have a cool, dark environment. You do not want the mushrooms to be packed on top of each other uh, because the bottom ones will uh, wilt. And really what you want to do is lay them out on a tray, uh, almost individually, and uh, allow them to dry out, especially in this wet environment. You want them to dry out a little bit. So from there, you can put them into a sealable container, uh, or you can just wrap them up in a, uh, in a cardboard box and uh, keep uh, a, a wrap on that, or even a uh, very uh, <clears throat> lightly damp paper towel on the top. You want to preserve the moisture inside the mushroom, but you don't want them to become too moist because when you're cooking them, uh, you're not gonna get that nice caramelization, the nice sear on the mushroom uh, if it's wet and soggy. All right, I hope you learned something about foraging mushrooms today here in Maine. Thank you.